Let's be real, Adobe's new generative fill feature is pretty easy to use, but it's technology that most of us have been tinkering with in stable diffusion for a while now. Our painting was first introduced by Dolly from OpenAI months before Adobe adapted it into their programs. There are some advantages to generative fill, mainly that it's backed by Adobe, and it's super user-friendly and accessible compared to running stable diffusion. So I get why it's so popular, it takes what we've been doing and packages it up into something anyone can use without needing to tinker with stable diffusion. Kinda smart on Adobe's part, actually. They know their reputation will give generative fill a leg up, even though we've basically been out painting within stable diffusion for a while now, even if it took a bit more tinkering on our part. The downside to Adobe's generative fill is, you'll need to pay for Photoshop to use it, and Photoshop will run you 20 bucks per month, whereas Stable Diffusion is completely free, being that you have the hardware to run it. As someone who uses both Photoshop and Stable Diffusion, I had mixed feelings when Adobe first announced Generative Fill. On one hand, I was pumped to see our painting capabilities brought into Photoshop in such a polished way, but part of me also wished it had stayed a Stable Diffusion exclusive feature. Don't get me wrong, now that I've tried Generative Fill with my Photoshop subscription, Adobe really did simplify our painting down to an easy click and drag tool. It's integrated so smoothly into Photoshop. But, what if I told you that there is a way to get that same ease of use with Stable Diffusion's out painting? Yes, that's right. It's possible with Photopea Stable Diffusion Web UI Extension, a Stable Diffusion Automatic 1111 extension that integrates with Photopea. If you're not familiar with Photopea, it's basically a little older version of Photoshop, but online. You can use it straight from the web at photopea.com and what this Automatic 1111 extension does is it brings Photopea into its own tab on the Automatic 1111 Web UI. And in this video, I am going to show you how it works. You will need Stable Diffusion Automatic 1111, Control Net, and of course, Photopea Stable Diffusion Web UI extension. If you don't have the first two, I suggest you install Automatic 1111 and Control Net then come back to this video. But if you have Stable Diffusion Automatic 1111 and Control Net installed then let's continue. First, we will need to go to the SD Web UI Photopea extension page. The link is in the description. Once here, click on the green code button. Now, click on the copy symbol. Now, open Stable Diffusion Automatic 1111. Next, click on the Extensions tab. Click on the Install from URL tab. Now, under the URL for Extensions Git Repository section, right-click and paste the Git repository that we copied earlier from the previous step. Click Install. Once it's installed, click on the Install tab. You will see the new extension under the Install tab called SD Web UI Photopea Embed. If it's installed, click on Check for Updates. Next, click Apply and Restart UI. After you've relaunched Stable Diffusion Automatic 1111, you will now see the Photopea tab. Click on the Photopea tab. You now have Photopea installed within the Automatic 1111 Web UI. By default, you will see Image.psd tab. Click on the X button to close it. Now, for this tutorial I am going to keep it simple and generate a default square image of 512 by 512. In this case we want to double the size in Photopea and use our painting to fill in the gaps. Therefore in Photopea, we want a resolution of 1024 by 1024 which is twice the size of the 512 by 512 image that we will be generating. So click on File New and set your width and height to 1024 by 1024. Then click the Create button. Now let's head over to the text to image tab and generate a 512 by 512 image. I'll keep my settings as default. I'll use the epic negative embedding for my negative prompt since I'll be using the epic realism pure evolution v3 model for this demonstration. However, you can use any model you want along with your own prompts. For my positive prompt, I am going to keep it simple and use something like portrait of a cyborg in a neon city. Next, let's click on the Send to Photopea tab here. Now that we are in the Photopea tab, we need to make our selection. To the left we have our toolbar menu just like Photoshop. Click on the Rectangle Selection tool or press M on your keyboard. Make a selection around the picture but leave a border around the image. Doesn't need to be perfect, just leave some image data around the selection like this. Next, press Shift plus Ctrl plus I to inverse the selection. You could also hover over the select drop down menu and choose the inverse option. Now, on this iframe height slider, grab it and scroll to the left to expose the menu. You could also scroll down on your browser window. Keep in mind that if you use your mouse scroll wheel it might conflict with the Photopea iframe window, causing you to scroll down inside of the Photopea iframe. Therefore, I recommend collapsing the iframe height window. Now, click the Paint Selection button. It will send the image to your image to image tab under the in paint upload subsection let's go over the settings 
Click on Resize and Fill. Link Nothing. Only Mask. Set your dimensions to 1024 by 1024. Denoise set to 1. Expand the Control Net window. Click Enable. Click in Paint. Click Control Net is more important. Lastly, Resize and Fill. Scroll back to the top. If you want, you can add a positive or negative prompt. For me, I'll leave the positive prompt blank and use the epic negative embed for my negative prompt. Click Generate. There we go. Now, this isn't exactly like Photoshop's generative fill, but it gets the job done, and personally for me, it's the best way to outpaint within Stable Diffusion's Automatic 1111 Web UI. If you're not satisfied with the results, you can shape it more towards your likings by guiding it with a positive prompt. For example, let's try photo of a cyborg standing outside a dark neon lit city. You could also increase the batch count. For example, each generative fill with Photoshop will give you three outputs. I'll just use two. Of course with better prompting and guidance. Messing with the settings such as CFG scale, sampling methods etc, you'll generate way better outputs than I did with my default settings. But I got to admit, even with default settings using just basic prompting, the epic realism model and the epic negative embed. The results were pretty amazing. Now, for the hell of it. I am going to take this same image and plug it into Photoshop beta and use generative fill on it. I'm just curious to see the results. I was going to end the video here and do the testing but if you're still here, might as well stick with me and see what we get when using Adobe's Photoshop generative fill on the same image we generated using Stable Diffusion. So the first thing I'm going to do, since the original image is 512 by 512 and we expanded and outpainted to 1024 by 1024 with Stable Diffusion I'll do the same and create a canvas of 1024 by 1024 on Photoshop and import the image. Since there were a total of 6 images that I generated with Stable Diffusion. I'll run Generative Fill on this image twice to get 6 different outputs. Since Generative Fill produces 3 outputs per generation, I'll leave the prompt blank. I accidentally clicked Generate to create the second batch of images to get the 6 images, however. Upon doing that I remembered that I entered a prompt in the last generations in Stable Diffusion. So I'll do that and enter the same prompt once this generation is complete. I still say Stable Diffusion's output was way better with the blank prompts, however, let's enter the same prompt that I did on Stable Diffusion to see what we end up with, which was photo of a cyborg standing outside a dark neon lit city. Well, there we go. This wasn't a battle video however, based on these results. Stable Diffusion wins. Well, I hope you got valuable information from this video and if you did please don't forget to like and subscribe. Keep in mind, if this is your first video that you are watching from me. I am not a strictly stable diffusion channel. I cover AI in general with a huge focus on generative AI such as text to image, text to video, text to music etc. I provide tutorials just like this and I also cover new AI tools. So hopefully I'll see you in the next video. And before I end this video. Let's take a look at the comparison of the images.